Uh, all right, someone shared the screen capture with me, and so I just want to go over it. Maybe it'll help somebody. But let's take a look here. The very first comment says, The Bible says we will reign with Christ a thousand years. Not that Christ will reign a thousand years. Christ's reign is eternal and it's not a literal thousand. I believe we are reigning with him right now. We that are saved are reigning with Christ right now. Make no mistake about it. If Christ is not reigning in your life, how can you say that you are saved? CJ Crypto says, this is not correct. After beast is destroyed, New Jerusalem comes down from heaven, and all the saints rule with Christ for 1,000 years. We will be immortal, but there will be mortals still living. The age of men returns to pre-flood where people live 100s of years. Alright, so this is the zombie doctrine that I keep talking about. Uh, it, they're not getting it from the Bible, they're getting it from false teaching. False teachers are teaching false things. And isn't it interesting, in Matthew 24, when he, Jesus is asked of the end of the world, what well, shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world, the very first thing that he says is, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, meaning Jesus is the Christ, and shall deceive many. For many false prophets, false teachers, shall arise and deceive many. Now we're seeing this more so than ever, I believe. And this is one example, so let me make this real simple for you to see. This really just burns my butt. Immortals, we are immortal right now. The second death has no power over us because we are saved. We are secure. We are sealed unto the day of redemption. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. We are sanctified forever by the offering or the death of Jesus Christ. All right. Or the death of Jesus is the one offering made once for all and we have eternal life when we are born of God when uh, we are born of God when we believe in the Lord Jesus we are born right now we are saved right now we are sealed secure right now sanctified forever right now we have eternal life right now we shall never hunger and we shall never thirst <clears throat> we have immor immortality right now but when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are changed in the twinkling of an eye. Not just us, but the whole world is changed. Okay. But let's go up here. After the beast is destroyed, New Jerusalem comes down from heaven, and all the saints rule with Christ for 1,000 years. Okay, so you see this quite often. Oh, they're going to reign and rule with Christ. That's the, that word rule is not in Revelation 20. Right, I, I don't know. They're just make they're just getting that from their own imagination. Well, I'll tell you, it's one false teacher teaches something and then somebody picks up on it and they teach it. But you see here there is no rule. No mention of rule. It's so the idea is that they're gonna there's gonna be zombies and you're gonna you know, you're gonna rule over the zombies. You're going to be the ruler of zombies. <laughs> it's just nonsensical. It really is. It's a zombie doctrine. Now, you ought to be able to see this. All right, look. After beast is destroyed. All right, so we see here when after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, verse 11, and we are changed in the twinkling of, of an eye, First the dead in Christ rise, and then those of us which are alive and remain are lifted up with them to meet the Lord in the air and to be forever and forever be with the Lord. 
Uh, just like Daniel says, that uh, some that uh, sleep in the... Oh, my goodness. What is that verse? See, I'm making a short video long right here. And I want to go over this stuff, man, because it seems like nobody is teaching it. Nobody gets it. It's unbelievable. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. This is what happens at the end of the world. Daniel's also asked him, and he answers what happens at the end of the world. All right, and then of course we go to Matthew 13. I could go over this just to make this clear. I'm going to show you something though that you're going to see very obvious. All right, and so he's talking about the wheat. The kingdom of heaven um, is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field, but while men slept, they sowed tares among the wheat. So this is ideally the same thing that what he's saying here: the immortal living with the mortals, except he's turning it into a zombie doctrine. All right, so the wheat and the tares are the same thing. Uh, not not in reference to the zombie doctrine, but for us that are immortal, we shall never die, are living among the dead. All right? Those of, us, those of us that are saved are living with them that are not saved. We are the wheat, they are the tares. Okay. So, when the harvest is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven... Just like we read in Matthew or in uh, Daniel 12, some shall rise to everlasting life and some to everlasting shame or shame and everlasting contempt. Okay, so anyway, uh, and that's the whole idea of the parable to give us an idea of what's going to happen. The harvest is the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so let's go back here. He says that. Uh, the beast is destroyed. So just in case I didn't point, I don't think I pointed that out. Let's see, where's this at? And let's see, it's right up here. The devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire where the beast and false prophet are. Okay, so this is right after when the thousand years are expired. Alright. Now, this is, Rev, Revelation 20 is given to, uh, a, a given a picture, if you will. Uh, a vision of what is to come. Alright, but make no mistake about it. When the thousand years are expired, the beast is thrown into the lake of fire. This is after the thousand years are expired. After the beast is destroyed, New Jerusalem comes down. And all the saints rule with Christ for a thousand years. So he, this guy is putting, are you seeing it? He's putting the thousand years after the beast is destroyed. He's not getting that from the Bible. He's not getting rule with Christ from the Bible. He's getting it from a false teacher. Now are you seeing that? When the thousand years are expired, the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and false prophet are. This is the end of the world. Make no mistake about it. The thousand years are happening right now because right now we are 
priests of God. We are a royal priesthood. And we reign with Christ in our life. We are a new creature right now. The second death has no power over us. And when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, the Satan is loosed so that he can go out and gather the unsaved together at our feet. Uh, and then the judgment of God is, are you saved or are you not saved? God knows already, but this is the end of the world and there's going to be that great circumcision where the flesh is cut off forever and the unsaved is cut off forever and there's no more sin no more sorrow no more pain and no more death all right all that is going to be done away with and then there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth and no more sea the holy city new jerusalem comes down from god and God shall wipe away all their tears. All right, so so on and so forth. This idea that there's going to be morals still living is a zombie doctrine. Now we can go back here. I'll make I'll make this one last point here. It says, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for a witness. So during this thousand years, so. According to the zombie doctrine, immortals, I guess you'd have to say, because those souls that are beheaded for the witness of Jesus are the immortals during this thousand years. And so the zombie doctrine says that Christians are going to be immortal and they're going to be walking around. I mean, Let's face it, man. That's what they're teaching. They're going to be walking around without their heads. There's really no other way to, to, to describe it. And no other way. People. So after Jesus comes, people are going to get their heads chopped off. And this is any way you slice it up. It's just straight up stupid. It's not scriptural at all this stuff is so simple even a child can understand it the only thing required to understand the Bible is faith that's it that's the secret man that's the big secret and that's always been the big secret how do you understand the Bible how do you know what it means well it's always been about faith even unto this day when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away so when you turn to the Lord that means you have faith it's always been about faith always been about faith by faith Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet moved with fear prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith 